Take a walk with me for a moment. Downtown Dallas, Harwood Street. Past the austere columns of the municipal court, then a sharp left onto Commerce. A dusty sign announces the presence of a curious building on the street corner, Doug's Gym. Reducing in weight gaining, it says. Faded black and white pictures of shirtless men with mustaches adorn the outer windows. They flex and pose in the hot summer sun, their muscles bulging even through the faded ink of the window shades. It doesn't look like much. Besides the fading window art, the brick exterior is beginning to crumble. The gym sits on the second story of the building, atop a suspicious-looking bodega. Suspicious-looking people mill around outside. Let's go in anyway. I've got something to show you. Up the creaky wooden staircase, lined with dozens of photos and news articles about lifters and athletes from decades past, and onto the gym floor. The smell is the first thing you notice. A mixture of sweat, iron, rust, and the sweet musk of good tobacco. The wooden floor is worn and pockmarked, even more than the bricks outside, and covered in a fine layer of dust. In fact, it doesn't look like anyone has swept in years. Decades? Then, you see the equipment. Racks and racks of dumbbells, old plate-loaded dumbbells and one-inch bar stock, barbells, squat racks, cable machines, bench presses, leg presses, standing press boards, a heavy bag in the back. A huge mechanical scale sits next to the stairwell. Heavy iron fans from a more durable age of manufacturing offer slight relief to the oppressive Texas heat. The windows are open, by the way. Most of the equipment is probably older than you and has the patina to show for it. It's wonderful. It's clear that as the world changed, as downtown Dallas changed, Doug's gym did not. It stood resolute in its methods, clear in its purpose. This was a place where people came to train, not exercise, not work out. This was a place built with wood, iron, and results. Things come and go. Doug's gym remains. Except it did not remain. Doug's gym closed down in March of 2018 after nearly 56 years of operation, all under the guidance of one man, Doug Ede. Today we have a very special interview with Mr. Ede. Um, it's not often that we get to meet people who have over half a century of experience in the health and fitness industry. Doug has at least that, um, even more. He's seen just about every trend and fad in the fitness industry come and go, probably a couple of times, but he remains committed to the methods which got people strong in the very first place, before there was even such a thing as the fitness industry. Heavy iron, simple exercises, and hard work. We are very honored today to have a chance to speak with Doug about the story of his gym, his experience in the health and fitness industry, and just to absorb some wisdom that he's accumulated over 60 years of training experience. I hope you enjoy this interview. Please check out the show notes. We're gonna post some pictures of Doug's gym, uh, as well as some of the old school lifters that he references throughout the show, and even some of the very same lifters who are on the windows of his old gym. So make sure you check that out. Hope you enjoy it. Welcome to the 40 Fit Radio Podcast, and welcome back to the 40 Fit Nation. Today, we have a very special guest. I'm very excited to be in his home today. We are on location with Coach Tripp. Hey, good morning, y'all. And then we have Doug Ede, right? Right. Of Doug's Gym, which, from what I understand, is the was the oldest barbell gym with a single owner in existence in America, right? Yeah, yeah I had it for right at 56 years. Great. I don't think we looked around, and, and Muscle and Fitness even looked around. Right. And they said they couldn't find anybody. They had some gyms that were there, but they went through many owners. Sure, mm, sure. Yeah. And that type of situation. But I stay from the beginning to the end. Wow, that's Did awesome. Myself. And you, it was in downtown Dallas, correct? Downtown Dallas. Okay. And um, I'm, I'm going to say a couple things first. Trent and I have already spent a few minutes with Doug walking around his home, looking at memorabilia, looking at some nostalgia, some some uh, magazine articles and print articles and pictures. And then we went out into his backyard 
where he still has a, a workable gym basically in his backyard. Yeah. With some great old black iron and some great old equipment. And um, man, there's a lot of history in your presence in the strength and conditioning industry or in this, uh, the barbell training industry. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself, how Doug's Gym started, about yourself personally, and let's just walk down that memory line. All right, well, I started working out at 16 years of age in my garage. Okay. And I was about five foot eight and weighed 140 as a sophomore, 10th grade. Too small to really play football. Time I was a senior and graduated, I had 195 and about six foot. So all that came in yeah. from 16 to 18. Then I kept it up when I went into service. That Korean War broke out. Everybody got drafted. So I was put into the medical because I had, they could tell I'd been working out a lot, mm -hmm. and they got me into physiotherapy. Were you in the Army? Air Force. Air Force? Yeah. Yeah. See, before they drafted you, they'd send you a little card and let you get, you know that you're fixing to be drafted. You could voluntarily go in. Oh, voluntarily join them if you didn't want to be drafted. Sure, sure. So I, w I went in there then. I stayed about four years, went in in 50 and got out in 54. And at that time, like I had told you before, mm -hmm. I was going to become a registered physiotherapist. Mm -hmm. But I went to the school to get into it, and I met an old friend of mine that we used to work out together, and he was a physiotherapist. Hmm. And he told me, don't go into that. <laughs> he told us. <laughs> he said, because you— There's no money in that. No, <laughs> no insurance don't recognize yeah, exactly. it, yeah. and you can't and he, be paid. Well, and therapists weren't even licensed back then. Doctors no. didn't know what they did. Doctors and, didn't even—I yeah. mean, it was just a hard way. Sure. So I said, well, why in the hell did I do that? then I could have been in the damn gym business and deal with healthy people. Sure, They sure. want to develop themselves. Right. Of course, in those days, there weren't many gyms around. Sure. I don't think there were one or two in Dallas. Wow. And so the, it was limited. And uh, the way I got the downtown started was I was working with a friend of mine in Corpus Christi. I'd go up there during a the week and go back to Houston. I'm from Houston. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then... Uh, when I was down there, one weekend, this fella came in and was a guest and worked out. And I could tell he knew what he was doing because he was doing the exercises correctly. And we got to talk. And he was my age. At that time, I was 31. And, and Doug, how old are you today? Uh, 88. This year, I'll be 89. Okay, great, great. All right. And, and he still uh, works out, by the way. We'll talk oh, about yeah. that yeah. in a minute. We'll talk about that. Well, then he told me, well, I'm in the same business you're in. I said, what do you do? He said, we got a place in Dallas. One of them is located, it's called the National Health Studio. It's located out on Lover's Lane. And we put another one downtown, but we can't get nobody to run the damn thing. We can't make nothing of it. Mm -hmm. he, said, he said, well, if you're interested in going to Dallas, call me up and hell, I'll Show you the gym. All we want to do is just get our money out of it. We don't even want to make nothing out of it. Sure. So I said, well, yeah, I'll take a look at it. And that's how it started. Wow. I bought it from them. Oh, okay, yeah. Real cheap. Yeah. A little easy payout. But of course, you got to realize one thing. Money in 1962 was worth 10 times what it is today. Sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So when you're paying rent of 200, yeah. that's like 2,000 today. Yeah, sure, sure. So, you know, you can't just judge stuff cheap. No, no, no. Money. It's relative to the economy. Hell, a brand new car would cost you 2,200. Yeah, yeah. And so so your gym was located off of Commerce Street in, in Dallas. Yes. How was downtown heavily developed at that point? Yeah, it was heavily developed. Real, de I mean, it was. It was booming at that time. So you were you were going you were moving into a, a dense area. Well, the I I moved into right next to the Hilton Hotel. Okay, yeah, yeah, which is still but downtown, still a hotel. What today, happened right? to downtown? Yeah. It was booming in the early '60s. By '69, everybody started racing to get out to North Dallas. You see, out that's the, when it went down bad. Okay, so that's when uh, the up what's currently today the Uptown and then Addison area started developing. Right, yeah. right. Well, out there by Oak Lawn area. Oak Lawn, and yeah. And all yeah. through there, that that started coming. People started, when I got here, the main place was Oak Cliff. Right, yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. Which, uh, sure. Yeah, I and lived everybody started moving out of Oak Cliff, and they started going to North Dallas. Yeah. And that boomed North Dallas, but that hurt downtown. 
because then they put Los Colinas in, mm-hmm. and all the businesses start going out there just to get away from downtown. So for about 10 years, downtown had a downward slope. So yeah. the rents were very cheap down there at that time. Yeah, that and that makes sense because uh, you know I live I lived in Oak Cliff for three years. Yeah, and you can tell it used to be beautiful neighborhoods. You know, oh, and, yeah. and, because a lot of them were built in the fifties and sixties. I imagine a lot 30s, of those neighborhoods, 20s. or or even older. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it really, you can tell there was a lot of blight with people moving away because there's just no infrastructure uh, today in a lot of those areas. But okay, so you you moved into the gym and the in the this was in the sixties when September you took of over. September nineteen sixty two. Nineteen sixty two. That's All right. awesome. So Kennedy got assassinated the next year. Yeah, wow. I, was, I, I wanted to in ask. Downtown. I see right. right before he shot. Wow. Okay. Were you there working at the gym oh, when Kennedy oh, was yeah. shot? Yeah. What ha- what hit what happened to his deal was he was coming down uh, Harwood. I believe he took a ride on Elmer Main. I forgot which one. But I was in that area getting my clothes out of the cleaners. So I had him on my shirt, and all the people were lined up. And there was a policeman there, and I asked him. I knew him. I said, when's Kennedy supposed to be by here? Oh, he's coming here any minute because we got a call. He's, he'd be close. Right. Well, I sat here and see him. And so here, here he comes. He came right down that hardwood, took a right, and I could have reached out and just touched him. Oh. <laughs> what <laughs> yeah, shocked yeah. me was I couldn't believe he was in an open car like that. It just, sure, right. It sure. Was, yeah. I mean— Anybody could have shot at him. Right. I couldn't believe that. I could have reached down and hit him on the head. Think about it, though. Back then, we hadn't had an assassination of a of a major national leader in in decades, probably a lot or, of them or a shot long, at long time. Yeah. Right, and and so that you know, I mean, if you look at the old White House pictures and the old pictures from Lincoln's era, in, even he would walk the streets. Yeah, he walked the streets of Washington no, and, and shook well, people's hands. Well, so. the, the president wore nothing after the Civil War. Right. Yeah, nobody absolutely. really wanted to be president. Sure, right, sure. And George Washington, what I gather was they had a force him to take it. Right, he wanted to go back to his land and work the farm. Yeah, he there wasn't no money in it. Sure. So, so you were you, in uh, early '60s. You started the gym. Um, tell us a little bit about the gym culture and how 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 things were back then, and just how well, it progressed. the big difference is there was no very very few females ever came in. Yeah. That most of the gyms they opened up in the '50s, they would have two gyms, one side by side, and the women. Sure. And now, strangely, it may seem the women's gym was cut out in half. Okay. The, yeah. They didn't get many women because mm-hmm, they didn't sure. understand working out with weight training and stuff. Right. And and we're so prior to that point. So if you if you go back a few decades from there, were women allowed in gyms? Because I, my understanding is that most gyms, let's say in the twenties or thirties or earlier, well, they wouldn't even went in a gym. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't yeah. culturally accepted. No. They, yeah. they, right. they, if it was something they wouldn't do. And in fact, the most of the women's gyms that started in, they start off with vibrator belts. Or these little rollers you set sure, on them, you sure, see right. them? Yeah, 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 yeah. And stuff yeah. like that. Real, not vicious, not hard exercise. Not actual exercise at all. Like today. You okay. know, it was totally different. And uh, just show you how much difference it was. When we, when they would put a gym in for the females, the biggest objection of not joining, you know what it was? In fact, they wrote books on how to overcome it. What is you, that? Huh, what's that? Now, you're a female coming in the 1950s and 1960s, and the biggest reason she's going to tell you I can't work out right now, what would you think? Oh. Well, uh, because I'm going to get big and bulky or because— That was a little bit. I wouldn't have made Or because um, how do I work out and still stay feminine and not not be in a compromised position? That was part of it. That wasn't a big thing. You know what it was? No. I've got to talk to my husband first. (laughs) Oh, okay. Yeah. That's the difference. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yep. You bet. Yep. You bet. And they, they, and there's no way to overcome that. Yeah, and the man wasn't going to let them go and work out around a bunch of other men. Well, yeah. <laughs> Back well, then. Yeah, I mean, no, just the idea of them working out. Sure. Because right. they weren't with the other men. They were separate. Oh, yeah, yeah. sure. Okay. Right. They right. didn't start integrating the gyms in about 1974. Sure. Okay. 70s. Yeah. yeah. In the they saw men and women in one gym. That was really unheard of in the in, uh, uh, 60s and 50s. So- 
tell us a little bit about the the culture of exercise at the time. What, was a gym kind of a special thing, or were people exercising at that time, or was that just kind of a smaller uh, no, interest? No, the people that exercised were very small. They knew how to do it. Okay. The majority of the people that came in didn't know how to do it. They wanted to develop themselves. The young kids wanted to build themselves up. And you didn't get many older people. Yeah, so it was mainly In young my gym, athletes. and uh, Just show you the difference. I was 31. I had one guy who was 48 years old. He's the oldest one. Okay, wow. yeah. And yeah. he learned how to work out somewhere because he knew what he was doing. And I was sitting in the office one day, and I was watching him run around the gym, pick the weights up. And you know what I said to myself? Damn, how does that old man do that? <laughs> I said, boy, I hope I don't have to keep working out when I'm 40. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Little did you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that was the culture at the time. And we, we talked about this earlier that our show is about, and 40 Fit is about keeping people who are over the age of 40 in a healthy, fit lifestyle and, and presenting science and data and also presenting experience like your experience as to what works. You've got 60, 70 years, almost 80 years personally of right. what works. And um, we talked about this earlier and, and we, we're going to talk about in a few minutes what I call the big three exercises. We talked about it out in the backyard. Right. And really, we don't need all this other fluff. Um, no. That we build that foundation of strength, but so so you had your gym and in the '60s and the '70s, and then um, predominantly a barbell gym, correct? Yeah, it's been, it was, well, it was a, to the day I closed up, it was predominantly a weight gym. Yeah, because see, I was there when all the machines were invented. Now, the fallacy is this, and and I can tell you the reason why they were invented. Sure, sure. People don't know that there was a reason they caused it. Now, here's what it was. In 1950s, most gyms did not advertise. You know, they just didn't think about it, I it's guess. Just, sure. just word of mouth. Well, they right. started advertising. Okay. They got flooded with people. One, and so they start trying to teach them how to work out on each one. Sure. Yeah, and right, they couldn't right. do it. There's right. too many. And the too problem was, and how in the world can we get this business and no instructions? Uh, right, so yeah. That the machine was invented. We had to dumb okay. it down. <laughs> yeah. And we had to dumb it down to the a level. The machine was invented yeah. right there. Yeah. Now, wow. it took several years to do it, but and we it, had Nautilus and it. all that stuff. We Nautilus, Nautilus came along. late. The first yeah. really okay. big one was at Universal. The, yeah. the okay. Universal uh, Gladiator sure. or the. Yeah. 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 But that was, it was invented for owner's benefit, not for results. Right. Wow. It was right. mass people through without no instruction. Good point. Very good and point. And that's what it was for. That's the purpose. Yep, yep. Because how can you make a curl or any exercise friction-free as the air? Right, what right. What machine can match that? Right. Sure, sure. You can't. No, you can't. That shows and, it. And, 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 you know, we, we see all these machines and we see all these other trends today. We'll talk about exercise trends in just a minute. But everybody wants to do functional functional exercise and they come up with all this fancy stuff and and the reality the is the reason is they come up with that. look the reason they come up with fancy words is one thing i mean man has done that historically to the past. <laughs> right. you know what You're the right. reason is yep. to create mystery and value yes, yes sir yes, you can sir. get an artificial price yep that's right absolutely yeah, yeah. you absolutely. see if somebody comes in the gym and they see these big machines going there's got to be something here wow look that's how right. complicated yeah. this is I'll, I'll pay him five hundred dollars hey. a month to train here. Hey, this that's is right. like yeah. this is like NASA, man. This is high tech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> that's right. Yep. So, so you your your gym. I mean, I've seen pictures of your gym, and Trent actually trained in your gym. That's right. For yep. um, a little little less yep. about a half a year. Yeah, that's year, right. Six seven months. Six seven yep. months when he lived in Oak Cliff, and and uh, I don't see any machines in that gym. No, no I say a machine. There's a. Well, some of them would be very few, like a Darcy bar. Right, yeah. right. That's not really yeah. a machine. Sure, right. sure. And that's about it. And a cable machine, but that's Cables, not a machine. Because no. the weight's there. Right. You're lifting the weight. Right. A machine, the weight's are somewhere else, and it goes through two or three pulleys, and you're not really feeling the weight. Right. You get yeah. more mechanical advantage. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I distinctly remember coming to your gym because uh, I was working downtown, and I had gone to the 24-hour fitness that was near my office building, 
And it was the typical thing. Lots of machines. You know, they had it was cheap. They had lots of equipment, but they didn't have many barbells. And it was just a it didn't feel like a place where people went to go get strong. And I knew that's one thing I wanted to do. I wanted to get strong and I wanted to put on muscle because I was a skinny guy at the time. And then I walk in your gym and I remember I open the door you walk up the staircase and I see all the pictures of your past gym members and, and all these big lifters and bodybuilders on the wall. And then you get to the gym floor and it's just barbells and iron. And I just remember saying to myself, this Dumbbell, is the kind of place yeah. where people get strong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. It's a totally different experience well, the than the modern gym. Too. The atmosphere. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah. I, you could just feel it. You can feel all and the work. One that's thing I in. noticed in gyms like that, people uh, are real polite to other people. Mm, Absolutely. Sure. Yes. Like I had one lady was working on me for a long time and she couldn't come to the gym. She got busy on her work. So she went to, I won't give the name of it. But she went to one of those big gyms you're talking about. And she worked out for two months. And I just said, well, how did you, did you do pretty good? She said, you know, I was all right. But, you know, I was there for two months. And you want to know something strange or what? Not one person spoke a word to me. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I find that in I find in barbell gyms and in gyms like yours, there's a com- you build a community. Oh, you build yeah. a community. You work. You've got workout buddies right. and and people that you meet. You build a community. You you also teach. You, you you have also taught and you teach as a coach, like we do as strength coaches, um, and you teach yourself as a member too to respect others, to respect the equipment. There's just a greater sense of responsibility in environment. Well, like another that. reason too is the people you're talking to. Are people who are more interested in it? That's yes, right. Yes, yes, absolutely. And you know that your energy is not going to be wasted. And the biggest thing in the gym, uh, in those mass gyms, you'd go to. Because my friend of mine owned a couple of them, and I'd go visit him every once in a while. Right. You don't feel like talking to them because you know they ain't going to do nothing. Sure. Yeah. Sure. They're sitting there with their earphones on and the radio. Read and, the newspaper and and, and, yeah. and they're not. They just there to be there. Right. And, if you, if you dug deep into the subconscious, it's probably the looking at the females. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you have to dig that deep. <laughs> no. But it's it's Just that's the, eyes. Right. That's the driving force, probably, yes, right sure. there. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I always say that um, you know, the the heaviest lifters in the gym, in general, the heaviest lifters in the gym are usually the nicest guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because because they know what it means to to suffer under the barbell. You know, they've done the hard work and and they they know where when they see somebody who's who's not as far along in the in their strength journey, um, they know it's just as hard for them and they've been there before and they always tend to be the nicest people. Yeah, yeah. and another thing that, that that people don't think about on training. Now we're talking about a younger group of people who want to, well, like you are, both of y'all fairly young. I mean, you are really. What age are you now? Yeah, I, I just turned thirty. 30? Yeah. Yeah, you was about He's my youngster, age when I went down to the gym. Right, yeah, 31. yeah. But when you're that age or younger even, your burning desire is to develop, you know? And that comes from, a, you know, that you don't want to be a weak person. Sure. Exactly. You have yes. a purpose. Yep. You want to look impressive. So you develop yourself. Mm-hmm. Now, but we got to get the part that I've uh, noticed through the years, because uh, I went through two generations of them just like you. Sooner or later, if they stay with it, they got to make that transition. They got to get off that bodybuilding ego stuff, or they'll quit. Yes. They'll either yeah. quit. Yeah. And they got to work out for the health purpose. Absolutely. Yeah. So they're yeah, not going to be a feeble old man walking around humped over, shuffling, begging the world for an existence. Eventually, a person has to get past of the outside and the aesthetics and lift for basically health and fitness and function. That's right. So that as they age, they have ability. Let's face it. There's two things that I tell my clients all the time, both my patients and my gym members and our population of listeners on this podcast. There's two things that put people in a nursing home. One is your mind goes, and some of that we can control, some of that we can't. And the second is you just lose the ability to do things. So we want to keep the ability to do things as long as we can. And you got to be strong to do that. Right. You got to be reasonably strong. Well, strong, what a man 20 years old calls strong. It's different. I'm weak for, say, you guys have been working out. Y'all 30, 40 years younger. I'm weak compared to y'all. But. But. (laughs) 
for my age, I'm strong. Absolutely. Oh, yes. I yeah, watch yeah. you move around here, and you're almost 90, yeah. and you walk around here like it's nothing. In other words, when I was 80, I was taking those 60-pound dumbbells <laughs> and cleaning and pressing together right. seven, eight times. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Fantastic. That's a great point. Great point. So um, so what happened from there? In the 70s, you had the gym. It's rocking and rolling along. Um, the barbell culture, the the strength training culture, how has it evolved over the last 15, 20, 30, 40 years? The strength part came slow. The first thing that I really noticed about it was that women would come work out mm -hmm. with the men. Sure. That started a whole new culture right there. Sure, sure. And it went along with that for a long time. The workouts didn't change much. Most of them were doing just lighter stuff and dropping out and... Mm -hmm. The guys that wanted to develop themselves were training wrong. They were training too light. Yeah. The people who got old didn't know how to work out. They would get bored with it and stop. Sure. It all changed, and the more and more evidence came into the system through years. You see it every day. Mm -hmm. You have to exercise. Yep. Right. Yep. And you have to exercise with, with weight, now, with load. There was a German philosopher named Arthur Schopenhauer. I studied his whole works. Mm -hmm. He wrote in 1825. Now, that son of a bitch was the most pessimistic <laughs> man that ever lived. Well, most Germans well, were. Yeah, he's German. German so so Stoic. The only thing he was, I couldn't believe what I was reading. Mm -hmm. The only thing he was optimistic on, you must exercise. Huh. Now, he's talking about exercise in 1825. Yeah, when right. lifestyle Nobody was very physical. Nobody heard of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says you have to give your body to offset the pressure that's on the outside. You have to exercise. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So there you go. He was writing that down in 1825. Wow. That's See, fantastic. this exercise came from the smarter people. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Most right. philosophers and thinkers through history were big believers in good health. Oh, yeah. That's right. Oh, yeah. That was a big, even Plato. Yes. The word yes. Plato yes. means broad shoulder, interpreted. Yep. He worked yep. out with weights. That's great. Great point. Yeah, you, th you think about even the, uh, uh, was it Hippocrates, you know, would talk about the, the, you know, exercise being medicine and food, exercise and diet being right, medicine, right? right? Those yeah. are well, the, the, the main medicine medicine need, came from your lifestyle. The, the right. big yeah. thing that you need, as far as I'm concerned, is looking at You need to work out at least two to three times a week. It's a minimum of 25, 30 minutes, but you must, some exercises have to be enough to make you huff and puff deep, deep breathing. Yeah. They have to be stressful. You've got to get that breathing up in a workout, yes, sure, heavy. Sure. And so, then you maintain a tranquil mind. Then you've got to rest. You got to eat in moderation. Everything in moderation. It's great. Yes. If you do yeah, that, point. that's a you, you've done everything that can be done. Great point. And if you get sick, or if you get something happens, it's out of your hands. Yeah, that's right. You're not. Yeah. You can't say, "Well, if I'd have taken care of my, this wouldn't have happened." Yeah, that's a great yeah. point. Yeah. Now, when you're talking about huffing, puffing, you're not talking about cardio per se. You're talking about weight training. You're talking yeah, about yeah. Well, I mean, exercise are like stuff. Get a heavy weight and do one or two reps on the squat. Sure. Take an empty bar with maybe 75 or 80 and go 20, 30 times. Yeah, right, sure. Right. Well, you really get breathing good, circulating that blood through the body. Sure. Then do the heavy stuff with it. You do them both. Absolutely. Yeah, so we talked a little bit earlier about, about the strength culture and about figures within the strength culture and, and, uh, and the health culture over the, over the last, let's say, 100 years. We talked earlier about Sandow and Grimmick and, and Schwarzenegger and all these different, you know, Atlas was one too, and all these different um, uh, strength icons. Tell us a little bit about what we talked about earlier about, you know, like Sandow and, and what you talked about, about how strong men – Looked originally, and then ha what, what happened with well, Sandow? What, well, uh, most strong men were big, bulky type people. They didn't look too good in person. Right. They were just big and just natural big. Yeah, yes. farm boy yeah. strong, just yeah. big guys. Yeah. Pitch, tough looking, strong yeah. looking. Yeah. Sandow was the first one that came along with the shapely physique. Mm -hmm. Yep. Where he showed his, and he didn't even know what he had. He just was strong man first. That was a byproduct. He did a lot of tumbling, and he watched his food, and he didn't get all that heavy. And so what happened when he would perform, more people would come there to see his physique. Sure. 
Right. Sure. Yeah. How he got so good looking and everything. That's what they were interested in. Yeah, I remember reading stories about women that would come just to touch his muscles. Yeah, well, yeah. That yeah. was in the, that was the <laughs> Zakefield Follies. Okay, yep. yeah, yep. yeah. He put he made Sandell a word all over name. He yeah. put him in a show in the Zakefield Follies. And he was a a broad his skin looked like it never been in the sun. In fact, he'd put a little light powder on him. When he, after he gets to the lifting, he'd go out there and flex his muscles. Yeah. Look like a statue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look like yeah, he's okay. made of stone. A Greek look like marble. a stone statue. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Greek marble. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. So what? Uh, who came after him? Different street, Well, he stronger. died in 1927. Now, there's a lot of controversy on his death. But his wife hated him and wouldn't let nobody, and his daughter wouldn't let nobody put a tombstone they didn't mm. they knew where yeah. it was buried but just grass over it okay yeah, yeah. and yeah. The, and they as long as they lived you couldn't do that then i think the daughter died must have been in the 60s well then a group of people gathered some money and they went out and they built a sandell's tomb mm-hmm. yeah but uh there's been a lot of things how he died one way was he was out driving his car around his model t and some lady had went in a ditch and he got out and induced himself to her, and, and we, he was he picked the car up and scooted <laughs> yes. it back in up and lifted and tore himself. Wow. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's one one deal. And another thing is that uh, I don't know much about that. That he somehow con- contracted syphilis. Mm. Yeah. They don't know if that was it or not. But there was some kind of animosity grew in there. At, as they didn't, that well, he went through a bad situation. So did he? Sure. Did he die at a relatively young age? He was then? fifty. Well, he died of that. He uh, he got an infection, and that's it. Okay. See, okay. he yeah. wouldn't have died today. Right. right. No, yeah. not with modern he, medicine. He would yeah. have been safe. He died, and just like uh, Rudolph Valentino died sure. around the same time, he was a, a one of the first movie stars. Sure. Yeah. Sure. He yeah. died of something. A shot of penicillin would have cured him. Infection was deadly in those days. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, you could Think just scratch it. your damn arm and yeah. get infected and die. Get staff and die from it. Yeah. Sure. So after after Sandow came, uh, who was after him that was in that same genre of strength training? Uh, was John, a guy named John Grimmick. You got it. Grimmick was a American weightlifter. He had a great physique on him, mm-hmm. and uh, he didn't really have the trained for a physique he just he got it through weightlifting exercises sure he probably never did over seven or eight different exercises in his life he did tugging cleans squats deadlifting press press pressing that kind mm-hmm. of stuff sure yeah. and he did a lot of push-ups and ch- dip bars chinning because mm-hmm. he did he could flip over and s- hit the ground and spread his feet he'd go right out <laughs> <laughs> he was yeah. real flexible, and, yeah. and he looked like a pretty big guy. You know, from yeah, the photos not, of him. He, he he weighed at his best about one ninety five to two hundred. Okay, okay. he's only five eight. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, very it muscular, like very very muscular physique. But he did have that excess definition. Right. Sure. He was shaped. Yeah, you can great, tell great it, body shape. There's kind of a look that strength athletes have he that bodybuilders that, don't have. Yeah, yeah. He had well, he was developed where they wasn't developed. He had a great upper back on him, lower back on him, square waist, yeah, and and heavy good legs, right, right, athletic looking. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, when you look at modern bodybuilders that don't do the heavy work as much as the old guys, as the as the older uh, weightlifters, you know, they were training for for performance. Um, they have a different look. It's that that back. They've got the V shape. They've got the real strong lats. And the, like you say, in the upper back, those traps are very well developed. Well, a lot of them, now Sandell and Grimmick both didn't have flare and latch. They had yeah. good upper, bo- upper back. Yeah, sure. R- right, right. From yeah. doing lots With, of cleans. Yeah, yes. Traps yeah. and, and all those muscles. I should have had a good picture of Grimmick here somewhere. I don't know where in the hell it's at. Hmm. Yeah, we'll find a good picture and put oh, it in the Oh, he's all notes. over the place. Yeah. You can pick him up in the... You can pick him up on that damn thing you got. Absolutely, yeah. We'll 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 post some uh, photos of uh, of Sandow and Grimek in yeah, the uh, show are, notes. Yeah, those are those yeah. are two top. And Grimek never was defeated in a weight in a physique contest. Yeah. And you see, you got to remember, physique contests come late. What happened was there were weightlifting matches first. Right. That was the main thing. Weightlifting. Sure. Be strong. Yeah. 
That was a, and and what happened was this. Bodybuilding happened accidental. They have maybe a crowd there, and then after the co- the weightlifting was over, they would judge the best built one. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and nobody cared Points who won. Yeah, yeah. Some guys would have hair all over their chest. They didn't make a damn. And they'd come <laughs> right. out and they'd do one pose like that, one chest and one back and walk off. And, and, and they'd give them a little trophy. So what happened was more and more people came there to see the bodybuilders. Right. <laughs> Not yeah, the weightlifters. Yeah. yeah. It's the same old story. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. want to get a, a, a look for vanity. They want that look. Mm-hmm. Right. Not to, not to uh, be a weightlifter. And then after a while, the bodybuilding part broke from AAU and had their own Mr. America contest. Sure. See, just pure bodybuilding. Right. And so that, that happened around the time that when Schwarzenegger was young, Schwarzenegger was already broken by then. And that's okay. Yeah. So, so that happened in the forties. Okay. They started right. having independent. Sure. Mister Texas, Mister California, people would go there. Yeah. Now the reason the uh, Hoffman was was an Olympic weightlifting coach, he knew that. He did never want he did what he was worried about bodybuilding that once you break it from the athletic performance, it would become. A beauty contest. Yeah, sure. exactly. And sure, he yes. wanted to prevent that. Right. Yeah. A right. sissy. Yeah. Yeah. And most of be sissy with muscles. Yeah. yeah. Sure. And yeah. They would lose. They would lose the the. They would have a lot of external attributes, but the substance would be gone. Gone. The right. substance yeah. of right. the strong man or the strength. And then they would, would talk about dyeing my hair. I don't want if I'd have had eyebrows or some <laughs> yeah, shit like right. that. Yeah. <laughs> oil. Yeah. If you oil, oil up the body. You know yeah, that. Yeah. That's where it evolved to. Sure. 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 Yeah. Yeah, and then you had you know Schwarzenegger and all those guys in the early in like the '60s that came along, and and uh, American bodybuilding really took off. Obviously, I mean California and the West Coast, and and you had guys like guys like um uh, the Mer- the you know the uh, the Metzgers and and Schwarzenegger and Ferrigno and and Colombo and all yeah. those guys, man. I mean early bodybuilding before that too. Yeah. Oh um, no, you had the 1950 Mister America contest. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Before yeah. those guys Steve, ever came, um, what was Steve, Steve Reeves, Steve, Steve Reeves, Reeves, and all yeah. those. He guys, was the yeah. first pretty boy to win Mister America. Yeah. Yeah. He wasn't very strong. Right. Yeah. But yeah. he had great shape to his body. Yeah. And uh, you know he just uh, he looked good because he never was. He was about six foot tall, maybe six and a half. He probably weighed 205 at the most, you see. But he had a nice shape physique. Now, when you owned your gyms in the 60s and 70s, did you see an insurgence of membership because of the bodybuilding industry? Because people wanted to come in and, and be bodybuilders themselves. Oh, yeah. The, that, the so. biggest period of that was in the 70s with Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When he came out, with when, when he started getting on those national... Uh, TV shows, mm-hmm. and people didn't know who he was. He yeah. never took his shirt off. He didn't make a fool of himself because he always thought they all like to make fools of bodybuilders, you know. But he'd leave his shirt on, and he'd, say, and he'd show the films yeah. of him in the contest. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, and then he came out with a book called The Education of a Bodybuilder. Mm-hmm. That was a huge hit. And then a lot of people came off that. Guys yeah, that yeah, didn't care yeah. about weightlifting. All they want to do was get the body beautiful. Yeah. And so at that point, did you see a difference in people in their willingness to lift heavy weights? Is it, Was there a split away from lifting heavy at that point? It was more of a pumping. Yeah, just to do more reps and lighter they weight. Would do, they would do body sections. Yeah. Say they would work their arms one day and shoulders. They made and then chest and back, then mm-hmm. like different sure. days. Sure. Right. They right. would just gorge your body with mu- with blood. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Hypertrophy the muscle, build the size, but not necessarily. Well, being the size straight. was built up from uh, the, the 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 cells were ju- gorged with blood, from right? Swell up. Sure, sure. Yeah. When you Get quit for thirty days, it disappeared. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. right. It wasn't substantial muscular. No, growth. it wasn't muscle. Yeah. No, it was just show business. Yeah, exactly. So there's a difference between building for strength and just building for size alone. Well, your muscles are not going to enlarge that size. N- nature won't allow it. Right, right. If it's done while your strength goes, it'll be a limited. Your right. limit. Yeah, and this and these guys beat those limits by gorging with twenty sets, just forcing <laughs> the arm to swell up. 
Sure. So, so you, you, the gym continued to grow and continued to move along in the seventies and the eighties. And I mean, you've been through <laughs> a ton of different changes in oh, our culture. Oh yeah. Then the, about I mean, the eighties, uh, the women started coming in, uh -huh. and then the prof I noticed the computer people started coming in first. Okay. Professional yeah. classes of people. Right. Right. It wanted to work out. Started around the 80s time, 80s, probably. 80s, yeah. late 80s, 90s. Yeah, yeah. Right in through there. That 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 was a big deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Sure. And so you'd have people that would be working downtown come and work out at lunch. Now in the last 10 years, five years especially, a lot of people are going in and doing old type of training, like powerlifting, exercising. And they're going back to the strength work. Yes. yes. So what do yeah. you think about that? We talked about that in the back. Well, I think it's good. Yeah. But I think if you're going to work older people, you got to use your common sense. Sure. Right. You don't want nobody to be straining with a deadlift at 65 or 70. You're yeah. Right. Right. But what you do, what I do, I would do it, is that do the same exercises, just cut the weight down a little bit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Don't exactly. let them get that force rep out. Yeah. Focus on yeah. technique. They don't need to do yeah. that. Yeah, make them reasonably strong for their function. Well, they feel it. Yeah, exactly. They feel it, but like this. This is a final rep. Yeah. You do this. Yeah, that's, yeah, sure, sure. That's what you want to stay off of. Sure, right, sure. right. Yeah, so you're still putting them under a load and still getting them to work. Um, and and they, they get to a point where their body has to grow to maintain that strength. Yeah, it'll go up, and, and their strength will double from what they are. Sure. Because right, sure. they don't have no strength. Well, I think They'll you, go back to normal. You made a really good point earlier earlier in the conversation, and that is, you know, if, if you, you personally compared yourself to a guy who's 20 or 30 or 40 or 50, you might be weaker than that person. But if we compared you to your cohorts, your peers. Oh, no. Yeah. Most you, of them. You, average you, man, 70 years old, can't right. even lift 20 pounds over his head. Yeah. Right. With one hand. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, uh, you, yeah, yeah, so no. you're strong. Yeah. You're you're significantly strong if we look at you and your peers, and actually probably two to three decades below your age, yeah. you're strong. Yeah, yeah. Uh, compared to say a high school or college athlete, I wouldn't be strong. Right, but yeah. But compared Neither to an average <laughs> kid in high school, I'd probably be. Yeah, I'd probably be stronger. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. So. Um, Tell us, tell us more about the gym. Tell us more about, uh, obviously, the gym. Recently, you closed the gym. Um, I don't know how long ago that was. Was that last year? year? One year this month. One year ago this month. Yeah, March the 1st. And you said something earlier about the reason why you closed it. Um, was it you wanted to go out healthy? And well, I got to looking at it, and really, because I lived on, see, I've been down there, like I said, 55 years. I've seen two generations of people. I know what happens to them when they get old. It's not a pretty sight. Right, right. <laughs> and that's always in your head. Sure. Now, sure. You're, I've been pretty healthy all my life. I've never used my Medicare card once and got a physical. Wow. And I strained my shoulder once, and I went to a doctor to look at it, and he was all right. He, I think he shot something in it and loosened it up, and that was it. I never had, never had no medicine or prescription for yeah. sickness yeah. or nothing yeah. taken. That's and pretty so, amazing. Uh, that, that is amazing. Now, yeah, you save a lot of money. Yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> then I got down there, and then that part of town that I was located in, they, they reopened up the Hilton Hotel. That's a $300 million project. That yeah. shot the property values up. Right. They closed the streets and back of me for parking because yeah. they were building a parking garage now around me. And it just got so damn much stuff, and the rents go up because with a new P, I leased all those years. Sure. Because I was leasing below the, the retail. Sure, Nobody sure. wanted the buildings. They were old. Right, yeah, right. Sure. And I took an older building and put value to it Yeah. from us point. Well, that ended. They kept running the rates up. And it got up so high, it wasn't worth going down there for. Sure. I could still make a little money, but but I'd have to leave anyway sooner or later. Right. So what the hell's the difference in one year or two years? Yeah, sure. It was over for me. Everything has its final deal. Yeah, good point. And you, and you need to know, too, that you've impacted hundreds and thousands of lives of people with strength training and health and fitness. And I mean, I'm looking around in your, in your dining room here with all the, all the pictures and all the, all the paintings and information. And so many people in life never really leave a legacy. And there's an incredible legacy here um, just in what you've done in the strength uh, and training industry. And what I really like to hear from you is the amount of depth 
that you have in the understanding of health and fitness as a as a as a cultural thing too. It's important to our culture. It's important to men and women to work out, not for just vanity like we talked about, young. but for function. Yeah, yeah for function. Yeah. We need it for function. I always used to say people, say people, the members of our gym, you come in to look good naked, but you stay to function. Look, and that's so true. It's very expensive. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Now, when I, when I started drawing Social Security at 68, I never cashed a Social Security check. Wow. No, because yeah. I stayed working. Yeah, sure. sure. I worked for 20 more years. Yeah, sure. And so... That's financially, it paid off. Right? Yeah, absolutely. You yeah, see? it's a great insurance yeah. policy. Right. Now, now yeah. I have to live on it. Yeah, so right, maybe right. I'll put another gym. <laughs> yeah, we talked about that earlier. You know, put me a little small one in. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but anyway, you got you. If you lose your health, you lose everything. Absolutely. You lose your mind, you lose everything. Right. They're all tied together, body sure. and mind. Sure. If you look good, you're healthy. You're going to have a good mind. Sure. You can look at all these people that are a little mentally off mm -hmm. and the ones that I've seen downtown. Sure, sure. Their bodies look horrible. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They, their bodies took on the look of their mind. Sure. Yes. yes. Just yes. pathetic looking. Yeah. A healthy yeah. body does does a healthy mind good. And, oh, and yeah. And now we know yeah. there's more literature and, like you said, more evidence to support that strength training and resistance training – He's great for the chemicals in the mind and great right. for the body and the thinking processes. Oh, yeah. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. And you want to train with strength training? or It's good for any age. You just lighten the weights up, and you're still doing strength training. Sure, sure. You don't make a damn. Yeah, exactly. Look, if a guy comes in the gym, is 80 years old, and he can't curl 20 pounds five times. No, say 15 or 10 pounds. Sure. He's doing strength training. Yeah, right. Yeah, if right. I get him to do 15 pounds 10 times, he's gotten stronger. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. That's yeah. what you work for. Absolutely. So we talked a little bit about the culture in the gym and talked a little bit about your gym history and, and closing the gym down and, and uh, an incredible amount of history in your house here now. Just looking, I was reading some more of this, um, reading some more of these articles and everything, and you've definitely shaped um, a, a generations about health and fitness and strength training. Right. And you've lived that out, too, yourself. You've, oh, you've, yeah. You've practically lived that out. So Worked out last night right in the kitchen. Yeah. And I was waiting. This weather gets a little warmer. I'll go out in the back. Sure. I don't okay. like to work out there when it's cold. Sure. Yeah, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. So I'm, I'm looking at some of this folklore that's in here, and I see this old fan in here. Was this in one of your that gyms That was here? one of the gym. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, how old is this fan right here? Oh, that's probably 50 years old. That's yeah. about to say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it still works? Oh, hell yes. Yeah, yeah they made things good back then oh, that yeah. last, you know. They didn't make throw a thing, throwaway no, things. The, you can tell by the weight. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. A lot of yeah. steel in them. Yeah, very, very heavy, yeah. very heavy. Um, so so tell us about uh, what your plans are in the future now. I mean, now that you don't have the gym. Well, you... I just kind of play it along. It's yeah. like it's going to see how things go. Yeah. And uh, I can't get back in a gym like I did. Sure. I'm not going to go into one space six days a week, 10 hours a day. Yeah. Right. You know, but right. if I get in the right thing, right situation. Sure. Because I, I would do it as a hobby just to, just to make a little money. I'm not sure, sure about that. I got a, got a pretty good already. Yeah. Yeah. And also influence the younger generation, influence yeah. younger lifters. As to go, as to you know, it's, I think it's really good for a younger lifter, and even a guy, let's say in his forties or fifties, to meet a guy in his eighties and nineties who is still reasonably fit. You're not close to me. Most of them are dead. That's right. They That's right. They don't live that long. That's right. And I think it's good for you to impart some of that wisdom that you have about uh, what works. You know, you, a lot of people have theories. Um, but what works is is what you've seen you, being used over the years, and and you've lived that out. You gotta as you get older, what you gotta guard against is holding that breath and pushing. That big valve. See salva. what happens when yeah. you do that? The heart swells. Yeah. Then you quit it; it goes down. But if you keep doing it, that's how they get a large heart from holding that breath too much. That's why that young. Guys do that heavy power lifting to see what, what you can do should be done in the younger people. Guys get around 35 or 40, they can increase their strength, but they don't need to get into, I did 
240 last week. I'm going to kill. I, I don't give a damn if I kill myself. Yeah. I'm going to make 250 yeah. this week. <laughs> right. Yeah, you don't need that. Yeah, we, we, have a, we have a small portion of our strength training population, older guys, let's say older guys and ladies over the age of 40, that still do some strength competitions. But their perspective is a little different, too. Yeah. Um, you know, you... you you know, you, you, you also know your limits, you know, and you know what's good for you and what's not good for you. And that's a hard balance, let's face it, because oh, you yes. still got a lot of ego at 40, oh, 50. Oh, yes. Know? It could be, it could come out in there. You got to be real careful with that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because these rotator get uh, cut, Rotator hurt, cuffs. Cut, yep, God yep. damn, they're common as hell. I mean, it uh, comes from me, as far as I'm concerned, it comes from not warming up enough, too wide a grip bench press. Yep. Dips going too low, yeah. and flies going back. Those three, right, yeah. right, are probably, yeah, are, are maybe behind yeah. the neck presses too. Yeah, with sure. a wide grip where you're yeah. going Ooh, like that. Yeah, terrible in the shoulders. That, that could be there. Yeah. yeah, hard on the shoulders. If you do a do the lighter weight, that's all. Don't yeah. get into right. that heavy stuff. If, if you were going to prescribe for one of your members, it's an older member, uh, three to five strength training exercises in moderation. What would they be? I'd say you'd have to do some type of bench press. Some type of pulling. Okay. The Darcy bar pull down. Chins would be too hard to do enough reps for a guy that ain't been training. Uh, or bend, one arm bent over row would be good with a dumbbell. Okay. Uh-huh. Bracing that lower back. Or if you feel like it, you, you might could bend over and do some two arms. Mm-hmm. But you, you want to keep from swinging that. Yeah. So that's all going to the lower back. Sure. Right. Sure. Those three would be the heart of it. Yeah. yeah. Then yeah. if you want to do some extra ones, add in an overhead press. Right. That'd yeah. be good. Yeah. And uh squats? Oh squats, yeah. yeah. Those three squats. Squats, squats bench press, bent over row. And you and you already said deadlift. Yeah, the the yeah, deadlift. Yeah, there you go too. So squats, deadlifts, presses, some rows. Um, some form of pulling, like you said, lap pull downs or chins, if they could do it. Well, rows is the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. Right. A bit over row, you're getting that bicep pull. Yeah, getting yeah. the. Yep. Yeah. You get yeah. your lats engaged. You see, and, curl is a natural exercise. There's no way in nature you're going to go out and do this. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. You're going to do this for <laughs> that, the biceps. That's right. Yes. You're yes. going to grab this and pull up. Yeah, exactly. Because they're yeah. going to yeah. work all these muscles with it. Yeah. So yeah. You, do the, you do that, do the natural motions. The back would be the deadlift and the bent over rows. The front part of the body would be the bench pressing. Right. Overhead yep. pressing would work the delts and the triceps. Sure. Yep. Then you got the squats for the legs. You got yep. four or five exercises. Go. You got it. There's the bigs right there. Yeah. That's what we do. We love that. That's yeah. what we do. Yeah, we don't have to make it complicated because that in and of itself, a lot of people mistake uh, the lack of uh, effectiveness for uh, its simplicity but you and i were talking about earlier the reason why it gets complicated and fancy and machines and everything else there's one reason and one reason Money. alone it's it's for gain it's for increasing the perceived value um, right but those five exercises that you just mentioned you probably the best physics in the world been built absolutely on that. absolutely yeah, yeah. and that's what we preach and that's what we use here with our membership and, right. and our listeners and so well man let me ask you this question if you had one thing, if you could go back, knowing how old you are now and your life experience about strength training and fitness and health, would there be anything that you would do differently now knowing what you know now and having the wisdom that you have now that you didn't do before? Or would there be anything you would change or modify? Not, not greatly, no. Yeah. Because uh, I always believed in the basic compound exercises. Because over the years, I meet I met different bodybuilders, you know, top ones. Well, Ken Patera, you know, heard of him? Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. He sure. worked out yeah. in my gym after he won the Olympics. Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. yeah. And uh, he's just, he still got all the weightlifting records. Yes, sure. yeah. The Lutch only beat him by 15 pounds. Right, <laughs> right. Brute strength. <laughs> yes. yes, very strong. That all these guys really worked, specialized on very few exercises. Like a guy named George Eiferman, among the bodybuilders who had the best chest development and I was talking to him one day he was at the gym he was an older man then he's old he's dead now mm-hmm. he said the main one I did was a bench pressing that yeah. did more for my upper body than any one I've ever done now there's one other I incorporated with it that really was good I'd get three boxes I put my hands on two my feet on the other and I'd put weights on my back 
And I do, this is a bench press Weighted too. Weighted push-ups, yeah. yeah. Weighted push-ups. Yeah, we do that. Seven, right. eight reps, yeah. as heavy as I yep. can do. Awesome. He said, man, a chest just popped out on that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we yeah. do that in our gym. We love yeah. weighted push-ups. It's right. a good, good idea. Yeah, I think, um, you know, so so let me ask you this. Um, I think what you did worked, um, and I, I think it makes sense that you wouldn't change a whole lot because look how healthy you are today and look how able you are today physically and and health wise, you just I mean, got to change it up as you get older. That's all. You're not sure. gonna, you're, you're not going to have the enthusiasm as you get older. Right, right. That, you know, but you got if you don't have the enthusiasm, this determines if your physical cultures or not. When you get out of that preliminary stage of thirty to twenty five, where you want all the girls to look at you, right? You get on a beach and all that shit. Yeah. You know all that stuff. You get there. You get out of that. You got to make that transition. Yeah, that's hard to make. Right, sure, right. That determines if you want to work out or not. Yes. In other words, I'm in this gym. I'm in this house at night when I work out. Yep. I'm going on a year and a half. I'll be ninety. I couldn't work out for no vanity reason. Right. Sure. Right, if right. I'm working out, I'm working out for other things. That's when it's hard. Nobody now, to look at me just by myself and doing it. Yep. Now, let me ask you this. The physical so, cultures, I love that. Yes. Do you enjoy just the process of training? Just the fact, just getting out there, and even though, so it's not necessarily the results at this point. Just, do you enjoy just the process of getting the I weights like out? I like if and I don't the... get on any of these super-duper sets. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Because when I do one set of 10, I'm not going to change. Right, sure. right. Yeah. It's meaningless. Right. In fact, it might even hurt my joints, you know. So I take a simple routine of tr I try to do it five days, six days a week. I take two, three exercises and do a couple of sets of each one. At the end of the workout, I stationary run for 220 jumps. Okay, yeah. Then yeah. I lay on a bench when I'm breathing heavy. Then I do a dumbbell series of light weights, 75 reps, pullovers, wow. that one around the world, this way, all right, deep right. cavity. Works the lungs. Right, yeah, I, right. I remember you going through those circuits when I was at your gym. Yeah. I remember seeing you doing those circuits. Oh, those in between. Yep, yep. Yeah. So wow. deep breathing. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's, so that's awesome. my Fantastic. cardiovascular right there. Yeah, absolutely. With the stationary running, the deep breathing. Yeah. 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 So let me ask you this: when you see when you when you train younger members, right, that and they're trying to make that transition as they get older, and you watch them develop and and, and age and progress. What's the secret to keeping, to staying with it, to keeping training? The secret to staying with it, you got to realize that you're gaining tremendous. Yeah. You're avoiding premature sickness okay. or premature yeah. death. And you're going to, uh, and you're saving yourself a lot of money. So looking down the road, looking in the future and realizing the benefits that you're accruing. Oh, yeah. yeah. I talked to, I got some old members to still call me that are 80 years old. Well, And all they rave about is how you and I have kept it up all the years. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome. And That's it's a cool. man that paid off. Both of us have been healthy all our life. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's awesome. That, that's one of the things I remember uh, when I first joined your gym is just seeing the, the regulars that have been there for years and years and years and years. And I thought that was really cool that um, even after all this time, yeah. that they still they still want to come in. They sure. still enjoy your company and, and well, the process. Well, they, they don't yeah. – they're not going to go to the gym with a lot of hype. They know what we know. Right. They've been around – you know, that's promotion. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Look, there's nothing, there's nothing that will make you – more of inventing fantasies and stuff in business as you get about a six thousand and ten thousand dollar a month rent. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. You change your whole attitude yes. toward it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a great yeah. point. <laughs> then you're that's the whole key to it right yeah. there. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Small. Yeah, I think um we try to we try to uh, promote this on on the Forty Fit Radio podcast and in the in the gym that Trent and I run and just in my practice life as a physical therapist. Um, we try to do what works, what's evidence-based, what we've seen has worked and get rid of all the fluff, get rid of all the, the sell jobs and get rid of all the fancy stuff, you know, exercise training. A lot of people want to look for what's sexy, you know, what sex sells, you know, in the exercise world, sex sells. And so we, we want to do what works and promote what works to our membership and to our, well, audience. that's good. But the problem about that is the closer you put people to reality, 
the poorer you'll become. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's true. That's true, the unfortunately. The further you take people from reality, the richer you'll yeah. be. Yeah. <laughs> you remember that. I know that. Hey, yeah. we do this for free. This That's is for right. free right here. Yeah. So, But, you know, the reason why we do it for free is because we're a strong believer in the culture of what we do. Yeah. That's in the right. physical yeah. culture. And we see that in you, too. You're, you're a grandfather in that sense to us about the physical culture. You know, well, you know. yeah, I've been around a long time like that. Yes, I've uh, read every book on it I can think of. And it all goes back to the basic stuff. There's nothing new. It takes you that long to know there's nothing there. new. <laughs> right, yeah. You got to go around the block to, to realize you were in the right place the whole time. Man, a lot of yeah. wisdom there. And, and yeah. uh, Doug, we, we greatly appreciate you taking your time yeah, with us thanks today. thanks so much. We appreciate and, it. And um, we greatly appreciate you imparting some wisdom to us and to our you audience see? today. You take a guy like Earl Flynn. Yep. Big yeah, ladies him. man all right. his life. Yep. All these Romeos all their life, they all went through a crisis not working out, but in chasing women. Yeah. They yeah. all got older and realized they ain't nothing new. Yeah. Right. And they get depressed <laughs> yeah. and they turn to alcohol. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. that's what kept them going all their life. They were young. Oh, man, I met a good-looking girl last night. They're, yep. You know, they're this and that. You grow out of that, or you'll go insane. Sure, right, or you'll right. be bankrupt. Sure. Yeah, yeah. You have your choice. <laughs> yeah, no, you're very wise. Very wise. See, you got yeah. to get to that point. Same right. thing. Everything works on the same principle, but different ways because it's different. This is the same thing, sure. basically. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing. When I look back on it, I had the answer when I was 16 years old. <laughs> right. Right. Yep. There are no secrets. Yep. Nope. No, you do what works, and you try not to sex it up, and you try to keep it simple and make it evidence, you know, make it results driven, and then realize that um, uh, it's a long. I always tell people fitness, your fitness and your health is a marathon, not a short sprint. You know, That's it's right. a marathon. Yeah. It's yeah. A you marathon. got to do it regular. Look, absolutely. 15 minutes of exercise, whether it's calisthenics or weights or push up, whatever it is, swimming hard. Yep. If you do it regular all your life, it's worth it thousand times more than if you go from say 35 to 50 or 45 and work four hours a day right. and sure, then quit right. yeah right sure. right yeah yeah you know it's kind of like saying, moderation you said it earlier doing right. things in moderation then quit you yeah see? when you quit yep it wipes it all away that's yep. right yeah it's kind of like saving money you know you just save a little bit every day and yep. it, it it's investing it versus spending yeah. it definitely yeah. investing it compound versus, interest compound yeah. absolutely interest, right. yeah and when you save up money what oh look all money is is compressed time. That's right. See, yeah. a dog don't have no money. So he's got to fight for his food every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He had not invented money yet, the animals. So they're a victim of nature day by day. When a man saves his money, what he does, he's bought time. You see, if my yeah, overhead is, say, $2,000 a month for 24 months, and I got enough income coming in is 30000 I bought... Time. Right. Yeah. You see, yeah. That's all money months. is. It that's gives right. you time. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's and great that's, insight. That's why you should save it. That's yeah, right. Yeah. You save it up time. Yep. Right. It's a good point. Absolutely. Wow. <laughs> a lesson in economics, well, too, man. Yes. Well, Absolutely. Yeah. Well, well, Doug, uh, again, thank you so much for your time. I could sit here and listen to you talk for hours, but I don't, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. Thanks again for joining the show. Yeah. Yeah, Darren, you want to yeah. take us home? Yeah, well, I just I hope I, you, we got it all down pretty well. Absolutely, and okay. we may have you back on the show. So you well, got to keep right. you got to yeah. keep at it, man, because we're going to have you back on here. That's right. Maybe in ten years. What do you think? Shit, that's <laughs> out of my hands. <laughs> I'm afraid if I was your age, I could say it uh, yeah. affirmative, but yeah. now. I can't bank on it. Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you something. You look great. And um, yeah. I just want to say thank you for imparting what you have into the fitness world and into um, the gym world, what you have and the, the, the long standing relationship you've had with the city of Dallas and with the people of the Dallas Fort Worth area. We appreciate that. Yeah. Um, and we, we, we consider it an honor to be able to get uh, some of your story and a little bit about what you think about health and fitness recorded for our audience, the 40 fit radio audience. But, um, Man, everything he said today is right along with what we think and how we think. I love the wisdom that our audience has had today. Well, you can't beat it. It's going to be right. right. That's, That's right. right. Yeah, if you, it's moderation and everything. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the key. Yep. In the Greek philosophers, in the schools, yep. right. they have a big sign. Two of them, know thyself 
and yeah. everything in moderation. Yep. Yeah. If you want to drink, drink in moderation. That's right. Yeah. If you yeah. want to smoke, don't smoke ten cigars a day. Smoke right. one. Yep. Right. Right. And one good one. Good one. Right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you stick to that, you'll be all right. Yeah. Absolutely. Great but the plan. problem with the modern man, he neglects himself. And he gets old, he shuffles with a heart beating, but no muscles. Mm -hmm. So he lives in a, a feeble state 10 years before he dies. That's right, yeah. The people in 1900 had strong muscles working the farms, yep. and when it's time for them to die, they just drop dead. That's yep. right, yeah. That's exactly yep. how The muscles were yeah. strong the day they died. Yep. Yes. That's great. Yeah. High level of function till you die. Yeah. yeah. That's the key. That's, That's yep. it. Well, guys, thanks for joining the 40 Fit Radio, and thanks for joining the 40 Fit Nation today. Man, what a great conversation with Doug of Doug's Gym, 55 years running in right. Dallas, Texas. Um, if you want to find more information about our podcast or about 40 Fit Radio in general, you can go to Instagram at 40 Fit Radio. You can find Trent at Marmalade Cream and myself at DL Deaton. On Instagram, you can go to Facebook and go to the 40 Fit Masters Community Group. You can also go to info at 40fit.com and click on the 40 Fit Radio tab and find more information there. Well, man, what a great conversation with Doug, with Doug's gym. Thanks again, sir. Okay. Yeah. We appreciate all your time and have a good day today, guys. Special thanks to Kevin MacLeod for the music that you heard at the beginning and end of this episode. It's a track called Surf Shimmy, and you can find Kevin and his music library at incompetech.com. <laughs>